Hello, my name is Bethany Nahra, and welcome back to another lecture from the 2020 Honors Chemistry Short Lecture Series. Today, we are going to be going over and talking about plant chemical communication. So I have an outline here that I prepared so we can keep track of where we're going. And yeah, so I'm going to read it now. What is plant chemical communication? CNN Ian article. Why do plants communicate? How do plants communicate using through their roots? How do plants communicate through the air? Experiments, which is the best way for plants to communicate? And lastly, a conclusion or a summary. So first we're gonna go over the CN in article. Plant signal danger through nerve-like process is the name of it. And it started with going over when plants are in danger, they will send signals to activate other plants' defense systems and release noxious chemicals. Noxious chemicals are chemicals that are dangerous or poisonous. The signaling process involves calcium ions and protein receptors that bind the molecule glutamate. Glutamate is an anion of glut glutamic acid, and glutamic acid is known to be a neurotransmitter. If you look at the pictures on the bottom, at zero seconds, a cut was made. 50 seconds in, you can see the calcium ions not only rushing to the damage site, but also to the leaf on the left. Then at 100 seconds, the leaf that was damaged is totally covered in calcium ions and the defense systems of the leaf on the left have already been activated due to the signals released by the damaged plant. Using sensitive fluorescent my microscopy, they found that calcium ions were added to the sites of damage. They knew this had to do with glutamate by using fluorescent glutamate sensors. So they sensed the glutamate, which is the neurotransmission made by the glutamate, they use the fluorescent glutamate sensors. What is plant chemical communication? Plant chemical communication is when plants communicate. They will do this with each other through their roots or chemicals in the air. When plants communicate through the air, they use volatile organic compounds, also known as VOCs. They will be referred to as such throughout this PowerPoint. They will also communicate through their roots using soil fungi and more specifically, mycorrhizal fungi, which will also be referred to as such during the PowerPoint. And I added a picture there from Plant Talk Science Magazine that kind of demonstrates what goes on in modern terms. Why do plants communicate? So plants will communicate for multiple reasons. They can alert each other before herbivore attack, threatening path pathogens. Pathogens are bacteria and also impending droughts. So Distress calls are one of the main reasons why plants do communicate because, you know, they want to protect their kin. They can protect their territory by secreting chemicals into the soil. If a plant senses that weeds or foreign grass are growing next to them and are going to be taking up their space where their roots could be growing, they will secrete chemicals into the soil that will harm them. And if they also sense that a plant is going to try to grow over them and block them from getting the sunlight that they need, they will also do this. Some plants will release chemicals to attract mammals for nutrients. And an example would be a bee to a flower because there is a very mutual relationship when it comes to bees and flowers because they need each other. And the bee is, the flower, my bad, is just making it easier by sending out these signals to the bees. How do plants communicate through their roots? When in danger, plants will secrete soluble chemicals through thread-like soil fungi. This fungi is known or called mycorrhizal fungi. This fungi will provide necessary nitrogen and phosphorus to the plant in exchange for sugar. So once again, it is a mutual relationship. It is, they are both giving each other what they need. It connects the roots of neighboring plants to form a common mycelial network, also known as CMN. The white string hyphae act as a fiber optic cables and carry info between the plants. So if you were to see two plants next to each other and they are communicating, you would see the mycorrhizal fungi of one plant connecting to the other. And then when they connect, that is what you call a common mycelial network. And here I have two pictures of the white string hyphae and it's very white and stringy and can be seen all around the roots. How do plants communicate through the air? Plants will release volatile organic compounds, also known as VOCs. Damaged plants will diffuse airborne VOCs to give neighboring plants a chance to ready their defense systems. So if one plant is damaged, 
by a herbivore, by they can sense a drought coming, they will release VOCs via air and send it off to another plant or any of its neighboring plants. These neighboring plants will then have a chance to get ready and prepare for what is to come, whether it be attack or drought. Flowers are also known to use VOCs to attract pollinators. As I said before, bees and flowers, so flowers and bees. Plants can change the volatile components to create specific messages. So if a message is sent by damaged plants, will will affect receiver plants, con species or not. So if a plant wants to relay a certain message, all they have to do is change the components within the compound and it'll be a certain message. A to give you more of a specific example, a specific VOC used by plants is jasmonic acid, also known as JA. It is commonly used when it comes to defense systems against herbivores. So if a plant is facing an attack by a herbivore, you will commonly see jasmonic acid being used to relay messages to its neighboring plants. As you know, hey, there's a herbivore coming. Some plants release certain VOCs while others do not. On the bottom right corner, I have inserted a picture of the most common VOCs and there they are. Give you a moment. Okay, I think that's good. Experiments. So this experiment mainly had to do with testing, do plants actually communicate with their roots? In the fall of 2009, people already knew that plants were communicating via airborne chemicals, known as VOCs. So they wanted to test, what if we block out the VOCs? Will the, will the soil and the roots, will they make up for it? So in the fall of 2009, Zdenka Babakova filled eight pots with mycorrhizal fungi, also known as Glomus interoducis. Each pot was given five bean seedlings, a donor plant and four receiver plants. So if you wanna picture it in your head, Picture eight pots, five beans, kind of one in the middle and four on the sides. One of the receivers was allowed to make root and fungi contact. And so you had one receiver who was allowed to make root contact and also the mycorrhizal fungi was taking over the root. You had another seedling who only had fungi contact and the last two of the seeds, neither. Once mycorrhizal relationships were made and everything was together, she infested the donor plants, only the donor plants, with aphids. Aphids are very poisonous to plants. And she sealed them in a bag or with a bag. So the VOCs couldn't be sent through the air. So the goal was to get all the donor plants infested and have no way of airborne contacting the receiver plants. Four days later, she placed aphids in the container to see how the receiver plants reacted to the VOC bouquets collected. The only, plants that the, the only plants that had mycorrhizal con connections to the infested donor plants were repellent to the aphids. This proved that the plants were using their fungal systems to send messages. So since the donor plants that already were exposed to the aphids were covered with bags and had no way of relaying messages via airborne to the receivers, this proved the fact that the donors were sending messages via their myc mycorrhizal fungi to the receivers. So by the time aphids were eventually dumped on the receivers, they were ready for the attack because they knew that the aphids were coming. Which is the best way for plants to communicate? Plants talking through their roots has proven to be more efficient than traveling through airborne chemicals. One study in 2009 reported that a fungal system was running through an entire forest. There were trees connected to dozens of others with a distance of up to 20 meters. So I inserted a picture there of trees and I know it's not up to 20 meters, but it kind of shows how what we don't see above is going on underground and all the roots are tangled and you are more likely to be walking on roots than anything. Conclusion. Plants can communicate through the air and the soil. Through their soil, they communicate using mycorrhizal fungi to transfer messages. The plants will eventually form common mycelial networks with other plants. When communicating, through the air, plants will release VOCs for other plants to pick up on. When the neighboring plants pick up on these chemicals, they will start readying their defense systems. The most efficient way for plants to communicate is through their roots. This is because the roots can stretch across bigger pieces of land, allowing them to communicate in wide ranges. Here's my work cited, and thank you for watching.